Well, good morning. You can just see the tree there at the beginning, can't you? That will come back later. Uh, we'll have a nice tree in a bit. We're going to pray and then we're going to actually start off with a song just for a change. So um, welcome to Eleven Z's. Um, this is Bear with Baptist um, at home still. Um, we're going to be carrying on with Eleven Z's for the foreseeable future, no matter what happens. So um, really hope this is uh, fulfilling a need and that you are still enjoying it. If you are, please tell us. If you're not, please tell us. And um, that really helps us um, as well manage what we do. Um, we are carrying on studying Psalm 71 today, which we will uh, do in a second. But let's pray first. Lord, we just thank you so much that you have given us another beautiful day. Lord, thank you that the weather is changing that we've had the rain that we obviously need. But Lord, it's really good to see a change of weather. And it's especially surprising to see a change of weather around a bank holiday weekend. And thank you, Lord, that you are going to bless us with some good weather this weekend and that uh, we've got a real taste of summer. Lord, we pray for every single person that is in need today. Lord, we pray for the various situations around the world. We pray, Lord, for India. We pray for the continued uh, situation uh, with COVID in India, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that you would meet the need of the hospitals where they need to get oxygen and they need to have extra beds to help. There's so many people that are in desperate, uh, desperate straits there. Lord, we pray for every single country in the world that's not making the news headlines here, but are also really struggling. Lord, we pray for the hospital services, for the doctors, for the nurses, for the carers, for those that are having to uh, bury the bodies or man the pyres. Lord, we pray for them. Be with them and their, with their trauma and with their suffering um, as they try and help other people. Be their comforter uh, and be by their side. Reveal yourself to them, Lord, if they do not know you. And Lord, we pray for this country with some of the political turmoil that's going on. Lord, we really pray as we start to open up more and more that you would give the politicians wisdom that you would help them make sensible decisions uh, that must be based on evidence and good sense and help all of us, Lord, to be sensible as we follow that advice as well. Lord, bless this time now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to start off by singing a song we sang at the weekend called Let Every Breath. This is Let Everything That Has Breath. Well done. That 
normally happens when I'm playing a video from uh, Rod and Claire that uh, it suddenly finishes a lot sooner than I thought it was. That was a very short song, wasn't it? But hopefully nice and jolly, and I hope you enjoyed that. Sorry that Hannah can't be here uh, this morning. Um, she had um, a couple of minor procedures this week, and uh, she looks like she's done 12 rounds with Rocky Marciano, like our next door neighbour commented on this morning. So there we go. Um, but hopefully she'll be back with us next week. Just advance warning, we've got our Sunday morning service at 10 a.m. again this Sunday. Please do join us. It would be lovely to see you. We then are not going to have an 11 Zs on Monday. We are having a day off. It's bank holiday and our children have persuaded us we need to respect these bank holidays, which we do, of course. And then we'll be back on Friday next week for another 11 Zs, which will be the second part of Psalm 71. And hopefully Hannah will be with me on that day. Uh, and then we'll have our normal um, service, obviously, next Sunday as well. Um, I'm not sure whether Hannah's doing uh, a toddler session next week or whether it's me doing a toddler, toddler session again. If you want to see that extraordinary experience of me singing uh, wonderful toddler songs, then uh, go to the toddler's uh, page, Toddlers at Bearwood Baptist. That's where you'll find it. It's quite an experience. Anyway, we are going to start reading from Psalm 71, and this is from verse 1. In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, rescue me and deliver me. Turn your ear to me and save me. Be my rock of refuge to which I can always go. Give the command to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of those who are evil and cruel. For you have been my hope, sovereign Lord, my confidence since my youth. From birth I have relied on you. You brought me forth from my mother's womb. I will ever praise you. I have become a sign to many. You are my strong refuge. My mouth is filled with your praise, declaring your splendour all day long. Do not cast me away when I am old. Do not forsake me when my strength is gone. For my enemies speak against me. Those who wait to kill me conspire together. They say, God has forsaken him. Pursue him and seize him. Or no one will rescue him. Now, part of the point of 11 is, is that you bring your drinks with you. It is 11, and 11 is when we traditionally have uh, teas, coffees, or something else. Now, if you've got water, ooh, bring some of that instead. Particularly as the weather gets hotter, it's going to be wonderful uh, drinking some nice cool drinks again. So, how many of us have felt cast away during the pandemic? Maybe we're expecting a phone call from a friend, a teacher, a son or daughter, maybe even the pastor or the minister, but nothing came. Maybe we're expecting just a knock on the door, a socially distanced hello from the street. Do not cast me away when I am old. Do not forsake me when my strength is gone, it says in verse 9. You know, our cry could be the same today. I have no idea when my next theatre project might come. I don't know uh, when I'll get time to write music again, hopefully soon. Lord, has everything changed? Is nothing the same? Yet life seems to be starting up again, doesn't it? The world seems to be slowly turning back into what it was before even with a few differences. Certainly there's more traffic on the road, there's more people about, businesses and the busyness of life seem to be cranking up again. You know, for so many of our young people, life has fundamentally changed. Their schooling has altered. For all of our children, from the youngest to the oldest, things have been strange and different. And from the first lockdown, to the lockdown that happened uh, near a Christmas, there were fundamental changes in schooling. The government decided to put um, other additional um, requirements for schools in terms of Zoom lessons. 
and things, especially in our house, became incredibly busy. As sometimes you had four or five children scrabbling around trying to get online together. But much more importantly and fundamentally, the relationships, the way they relate to their peers has changed. Now you could argue that technology has changed that significantly and fundamentally anyway in terms of the use of mobile phones and texts, WhatsApp, their watching of YouTube. A lot of young people use Snapchat and Instagram. It changes the relationship between people. And also it can be a very cruel place. It can be that actually um, people can say things and do things on text for adults, on email, in Snapchat and Instagram, particularly on Snapchat where it can just disappear uh, when they don't really mean to be that nasty and cruel, I'm sure. Relationships have suffered. Their self-esteem has suffered. Their mental health and sense of well-being has deteriorated. And you put that in the mix with just being teenagers or growing up, or being small children and just trying to relate to the world. Their thoughts must be, Lord, have you cast us away? Do you not love me anymore? I've got a picture of a sailing ship here. It's this interesting picture, isn't it? When you look out over the ocean sometimes, when I'm back home in Felix though, and it just stretches on forever. Or do we feel cast away that the Lord has just literally set us adrift? Yet our psalm today is specifically focusing on the older per person. Do not cast me away when I am old. So do we actually have a best before day as human beings? Are we even worth listening to when we reach a certain age? Isn't it true that we become more of a burden on society and therefore our friends and church and family and the local services? Well, Proverbs 20, 29 says this, The glory of the young is their strength. The grey hair of experience is the splendour of the old. It's a nice old tree that I've got there. There is, of course, the old adage, youth is wasted on the young. You know, that's not always true, is it? But sometimes it, it is. And sometimes I think when we have the experience of life as we get older, uh, we kind of go back and think, wow, if only I'd made a different decision in the hindsight of what I know now. Now, Proverbs 23, verse 22 says this, Listen to your father who gave you life, and do not despise your mother when she is old. Older people have been through it. Some, like my parents, or oh, there's a couple of Bettys we know very, very well. One of us just turned 90, I think. Happy birthday again, Betty. Have lived through the last Great War, World War II. They have amazing testimonies and stories to tell of how God has worked in and through their lives. I've heard my parents when they've talked about how they had to escape uh, the bombing and was sent into the country uh, and what actually happened there. But there's also stories that fill us with hope and inspiration as the country came out of those wartime years, as rationing went on for actually for years. And then suddenly immigration started to happen in um, huge, uh, huge quantities of people coming over from various places. And our nation was enriched and helped massively by immigration from India, from Pakistan and from the West Indies particularly. Later on in our psalm it says this, Even when I am old and grey, do not forsake me, my God, till I declare your power to the next generation, your mighty acts to all who are to come. You know, I've been thinking about George Floyd a little bit this week. I remember speaking to Linda Smichael, a really good friend of ours, and hearing some of her stories about when she first came over to this country. 
some of those are pretty shocking. Some of those we would find it very difficult to imagine today. Thank you, Lord, that you brought Linda and so many people over to help this country. And we are so sorry about what happened to so many people when they came over here. These stories can be an inspiration for us, they can berate us, or they can be anchors in our lives. As we hear how many people held on to the Lord God through difficult and tough times, through times in their families or times in society, from times when you know, certain people like Linda weren't even allowed to the front of the church to times when now we welcome people with open arms and society is really starting to change in a meaningful way. The inspiration here is tell your story. Retell God's faithfulness about answered prayers. Tell people about God's comfort in distress. Tell people about how God provided your needs, how he warmed the hearts of friends and neighbours. It's about struggles and success. It's about how God has worked in your life and how God has been faithful to you. But the godly will flourish like palm trees, it says in Psalm 92. Even in old age they will produce fruit. They will remain vital and green. They will declare the Lord is just, he is my rock. There is no best by date. It says here, they will remain vital and green. Some of the greatest prayer warriors that I know are older people. Some of the people that I know that are most inspirational to me are people that are older than me. Just as my kids look at me and think I am completely ancient, <laughs> I look at some of my friends and think, wow, some of the things that you have been through, you're an inspiration to me to keep going. You know, rejoicing, having joy in every moment is really important, isn't it? And even when we're older, there is the challenge to keep sharing our faith. I'm just going to go back to something Jesus said to a guy called Nicodemus. Nicodemus had come to Jesus and to ask him various questions. We read about Nicodemus in John 3. I'll pick it up from verse 4. What do you mean? Nicodemus said. How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, humans can reproduce only human life but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. Why am I bringing this up? Well, it's never too late to be born again. You know, your witness to older friends and neighbours, whatever age we are, is absolutely vital. They need to hear the gospel and they need to hear the gospel now. And the gospel is not only Jesus Christ dying for us on the cross and shedding his blood, bridging that gap between us and God. The gospel is how that has worked out in your life. What it means to you to have that direct contact with God through Jesus every day. What the Holy Spirit has done in your life. The fruit of the Spirit that is born by you walking with Jesus every single day. It is vital now as it ever was. And if you're afraid about sharing words, then ask the Spirit to lead you. It could be a card. It could be a cake you can make. It could be a kind gesture. Or it could be that the Spirit just puts words in your mouth and that you hear him speak through you as you start to engage in love and conversation. You know, your task is not finished. I am going to put an old man up now. Have a look at him. I love his face. Your task is not finished. 
you are to live as the redeemed of God. Galatians 2.20 says this, My old self has been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body and trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You know, there was a 19th century Anglican preacher called Charles Simeon. He retired after 54 years of ministry. One day, a friend of his found out that he still got up at 4 a.m. every morning to pray and study the scriptures when he was retired. He gently scolded him, telling him he should take it easy now and just, you know, get up a little bit later. You know, he's obviously not working as a minister now. Charles Simeon replied, Shall I not now run with all my might when the winning post is in sight? I don't know how you feel today. I certainly don't feel like getting up at 4am myself, although last night was a pretty tricky night and I think I was up about 3.30 and 4. But God reminds us today in Hebrews 12, 1-2, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. I don't know what you think about running today. I was told yesterday by a doctor in the hospital that I should give up running completely because my knee is in a bit of a mess. But in Jesus, we can keep running that race. And we can keep running with the power of the Spirit blowing through our hair, filling us and helping to give us that energy that we need as we hold out the word of life to people around us. Don't give up running that race today, but try and do it even more urgently. So I'm just going to uh, just finish with um, come as you are. We have to come to God as we are, and uh, the Lord will accept whatever we bring to him. Uh, this is Come As You Are.
Earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal. So thanks to Freya, thanks to Josiah, thanks to um, my beautiful wife for uh, the music as well. We're just going to finish with um, just part of the psalm that we've been studying from verse 7 to 8. You are my strong refuge. My mouth is filled with your praise, declaring your splendour all day long. Let's really try and praise God this weekend, whatever we're doing, in whatever way that we can. Just want to thank God for all the blessings that He's given me, and uh, just want to continue to just remember those as we go along together. Thank you so much for joining us. If you're joining us live, thank you, Morning Nordi, and whoever else I can't see on uh, on the the um, the chat as well. So thank you for joining us. If you're joining us later on, uh, then bless you, and uh, and I really hope you have a lovely weekend too. And we hope to see you back here at 10 a.m on Sunday morning. Till then, God bless.